this video, we're going to cover the copy and move process. I have Azure SQL Manage Instance 1, and I have a database on it that I'm going to copy to Azure SQL Managed Instance 2. In order to do this, we've got to configure a few things. Each Azure SQL Manage Instance comes within its own virtual network. Now, you could deploy multiple managed instances to different subnets on the same virtual network but most people will probably have them on two different virtual networks. They need to be in the same region and in the same subscription in order for this to move. And what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create a network peering between virtual network one and virtual network two. After that, we then need to look at Azure Key Vault. My Manage Instance one is associated with an Azure Key Vault key. This key is used to be able to put transparent data encryption on my databases. So that way I can do copy only backups or I can move them to another region. Because this key is associated with Manage Instance 1 and that key puts the thumbprint of the header of the key in the header of the database file. I need to have that same key on Manage Instance 2 in order for us to be able to restore the database. So once I have my network peered and I have my TDE key associated with my SQL Manage Instance 2, I'll be able to copy the database from one instance to the other. I'm going to start out by looking at the virtual networking for my two managed instance. I want to make sure that the address space doesn't overlap and it looks like we're good to go. So now let's go over and let's create a peering. I need to create a peering between my two virtual networks. I'm going to enter in the name and I'm going to make this reflective of the virtual network we have. I'm going to call this bball main us east peering. And then I'm going to make this one more reflective of the same virtual network that we have vnet dash SQL insiders peering. I'm going to go and I'm going to select the virtual network for vnet SQL insiders and I'm going to click add. Now this will create a peering between my two networks. I can now go over and select my database, my college database, and this will be the database we're going to copy. I click copy in the Azure portal, and then I come over and I select next. I'm going to select the destination. I'm going to do this by going into my resource group and typing SQL MI insiders, and I'm going to select this and I'm going to select my SQL My Insiders Manage instance. Now I'm good to go and I can start the copy process. Now you can see that this started successfully, but I want to go and I want to check the status of this. So I'm going to go and I'm going to look at databases and I can see my copy operation failed. And it's very specific. This is because I have not attached my transparent data encryption key to my Manage instance. And so Without that thumbprint, remember, this is going to fail because I can't restore the database. It's part of the security that's in our transparent data encryption. So I need to go to transparent data encryption, take a look at the key I have associated with my SQL Manage instance, my first managed instance. And I'm going to now go to my second managed instance, and I can get there through the resource menu or multiple other ways. And I'm going to go down to transparent data encryption under security. And I'm going to now make this a customer managed key. Let's focus on make this key the default TDE protectorate. In this demo, I leave this checked. However, in your instance, you may not want to leave this checked. If you do leave this checked, here's what will happen. It will make this the default certificate and key used for all databases on the managed instance, meaning that if a key was previously in use, all databases would be re-encrypted with this new key and the previous key would no longer be used. This is probably not what you want to do. It could be, but it is important to note this will change all the databases on the instance. Now, if you uncheck this, it would not change the default for the managed instance. It would get access to the key, copy the database, and then if it was unencrypted, it would leave the database in an unencrypted state. If it not, it would re-encrypt it with the destination instance key. 
that is probably the result you would want and will be the more popular option. To do that, uncheck the checkbox by make this key the default TDE protector. I'm going to enter a key identifier. I'm going to select a key vault I have in my subscription. In this case, I'll be using the BPAL key vault US East. And then I'll be selecting my TDE key, B-Ball TDE key. In order to be able to select the proper key, I can see that this version matches the version that was on my other Manage instance. And so now I can go ahead and I can click Save to be able to associate this key with my SQL and my insiders where I want to copy my database to. Now that I have saved this and my TDE key is associated with it, I'll be able to have this database be restored. So let's go back to bball SQL Manage Instance East, our, our first instance. And I'm going to go to my databases and I'm going to select my college database. And I'm going to do a copy operation. Everything is set in my source. I'm going to go in my details. And once again, I'm going to use the resource group SQL MI Insiders. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And it looks like everything is good, so I'm going to click OK. And now my database copy process has begun. So I'm going to go over to my databases, and I'm going to check the status. And I see that my copy has progressed. So let's open up SQL Server Management Studio, and let's see if our database is in place. I'm going to click Refresh, and sure enough, I can see that my college database is there. I can also look at sys databases and see that the database has indeed made its way to SQL Manage Instance. I can see my copy is ready for completion. And I'm going to click Yes for the completion to continue. And now that the completion is finished, I can come back over to SSMS and I can run one of the standard reports for disk usage by top tables. And I can see that my data is indeed updated. Now that we've performed a copy operation, let's perform a move operation. I'm going to come back over to my Azure portal, and I'm going to select my InventureWorks 2017 database. I'm going to now say Move. As you can see, my default information is set. So I'm going to go to my Detail. I'm going to use my resource again. SQL MI Insiders, and I'm going to use the SQL MI Insiders Manage Instance. I'm going to Review and then click Start. And I can see that the Move database operation has uh, successfully started. I come back to the databases and I can see that the Move operation is in progress. And here it is, not a lot more information other than that it is in process. So let's go ahead and close this. And now let's take a look at our Manage Instance. Now I can see that my AdventureWorks database is still on my Manage Instance, but it is also apparently on my SQL MI Insiders as well. Let's go back over to the Azure portal. I can see after I refresh, the move is ready for completion. Let's complete the move operation. I can see that it is in progress. And after a refresh, I can see that my Manage Instance database is now here. My AdventureWorks, I can see it's grayed out and it says that the move is completed. Let's head over to SSMS. Let's do a quick refresh. I can see that my AdventureWorks database is no longer here, but my AdventureWorks database is now sitting on my SQL Insiders. If I take a look at my built-in reports, disusage by top tables, I can see that all of my tables and all of my records have been transferred over.
And that is how you use the move and copy operations for SQL Manage Instance. Thank you.